So a very interesting phenomenon had happened, and apparently it happened in Asia too, where people who were really poor, very uneducated, and even criminals, yes, uh, started opening game shops. And then they would close. People like Mark's Cards, who filed for bankruptcy, who stole over a million dollars of their customers' money by taking the money that was given to them to do PSA grading and instead spending that on their family. Mark's Cards, about their family. You won't ever see his face ever again in the sports card industry. Clutch Cards, we've covered them and their Pokemon and one Piece pre-orders and Locana pre-orders, same exact story. Well, in Hong Kong, this is unfolding in real time. You have a group of individuals. They created a company called Card Bros. They took a bunch of pre-orders. Then they spent it on Rolexes and vacations, and there's no money left. We saw this not just in card shops. We saw this in card games like Meta Zoo. Now, the zoo took pre-orders from its customers, promised to pay its players uh, tournament earnings, and they are now in bankruptcy. We saw this with TC oh, entire conventions, right? Conventions like TCG Con. TCG Con conned its artists, its users, its players. They couldn't pay out the lavish amounts of money they had promised for the winners of these tournaments because they went broke, so probably filed for bankruptcy. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Run up the debt, run the debt up, start pointing fingers at your co-partners or your partners, and then just create a new company and run up the debt on that new company. Doesn't matter that the players didn't get paid. It doesn't matter that the customers have who spent a lot of money with you previously, they're out a pre-order. This is essentially the MO of many, many game stores right now. It's unfortunate, but you should have understand. If your game store owner is not in the game store at all, the game store is closed at all times, and they are not live breaking, they're not live streaming, they're at Japan, or your game. if your game store owner one day comes with a blinged out platinum Rolex, you're in trouble. <laughs> your pre-order not going to get fulfilled, guys. If your game store owner starts driving a Lamborghini to his game store, mm, your pre-order not going to get fulfilled. If your game store owner starts buying toys that they did not previously had before, you effed. And this is what's happening. You know, you, you see a lot of these clutch cards is a really good example. They kept buying these tickets to premium seating at these venues like F1 racing and then there was open a box and say, oh, it's a business expense, right? It's not a money effing business expense. You wanted to go to the hockey game and just because you open a box of cards in front of the hockey stadium does not mean it's a business expense. It's something that you wanted to do yourself. Simple as that. And, you know, it's like, oh, I had to go to Japan to buy some cards. Nope, you didn't have to do that. You went with your OnlyFans models. You paid an OnlyFans model to go with you. And then you spent ridiculous sums of money on that individual. And then you bought yourself and that individual Rolex. That was not part of the business. That's not a business plan. I think what happened is a lot of these store owners, they used the store's money and they didn't use it for the customers or they used the customer money and they used it on themselves. That's exactly what Mark's Cards did. Mark's Cards, Mark's like these we're talking about near six figures marks got paid his brother his wife his brother's wife his brother's wife's friend and then his wife's friend all exorbitant salaries given that they are a brand new game store and that's where all the money went the money went to salaries so those millions of dollars that million plus dollars it's gone where did this money go what where did the money go the money went to traveling your money went to OnlyFans. The money went to buying collectible figures, it looks like. It, the money went to other things. And now they're pointing fingers at each other because they want to do it again. Do you, you understand what they're trying to do? They're trying to say, oh, it wasn't me. It was them. That we have four partners. It was that partner, that partner. But it was everyone but not me. You are in on it, man. I mean, at the end of the day, like, what can I say except you are partnered. If you saw something go wrong, you should report it. 
not wait until like you, I mean, yeah, I can tell you pretty bad stories about my partner. Uh, they weren't really that good, but I made everything amends. I refunded when I had a refund. I had to do everything to stay in business because I respected my name. I ain't going to show my face around when I ain't get, when I got customers and they haven't been they paid me and I haven't delivered what I said I would deliver. Um, and you can see that the other people they don't even want to show their face, right? They're just posting on Instagram with 22 likes. Well, uh, that's not really sufficient for the millions of dollars that you stole, or millions of Hong Kong dollars that you stole. I think at the end of the day, uh, a lot of these game store owners, they're going to do more and more and more like this because they, they're trying to fund their lifestyle. But you, you think about MetaZoo, you really think about that game for a moment in time. And you think, think about all the people, all the different types of people they owe money to. The most grievous, of course, is their customers who pre-ordered from them. Some of them pre-ordered 500 plus dollars of stuff. I've seen the receipts on that. And then you look at the uh, artist, right? They, they're selling their artist artwork to fund their lawyers. Again, uh, in, in Magic the Gathering, the artist, in my opinion, is allowed to, or I believe, is allowed to keep their artwork and then sell it themselves for, if you look at Teresa Nielsen, for large sums of money. So I don't know why in MetaZoo, the Mike Waddell character gets to keep all their artwork when it's just a license for the artwork for a card, right? Kona uh, not Konami. Kurobi, they owe Sanrio a bunch of money. They owe their card printer a bunch of money, and the card printer is shopping around, <laughs> apparently shopping around the inventory. But they don't want anyone to tell you that they're shopping around. You know, they're not going to sell it to Nick no more. But you know, I'll probably approach them to see if they'll sell it to me. They don't want it to be public. They're selling the inventory, but it seems like they were open to selling the inventory previous to be being part of a Nick Strength and Pokemon video. So they're, they're trying to, everyone at this point is trying to get even, it includes Salesforce, including Golden Distributor, who's that handy guy or whatever his name is. Everyone is trying to get even because when you scam this much money, the money has to go, the, somebody has to take it out. It's your customers, it's your vendors, it's your player base. They're taking the L to the face. So when the clutch cards or this card bro company goes belly under and these pre-orders that they've already taken the money for, the money's already gone. The money is in their tummies. The money is in for an OnlyFans. The money is in these Japan trips that this, I mean, they're not for business. Like you didn't do it. You bought a Rolex in mother effing Japan and now you expense it as a business because you got to fit in like this guy. Look at, look at him. Wow. So he got front row seats at the F1. And now he's going to rip Topps Chrome F1. And somehow that's going to be count as marketing spent. Like, no wonder they went out of business, guys. None of these people know how to run a business because they're not trying to run a business. They're trying to live the lifestyle. And then once they're, you know, who who suffers in clutch cards? Vendors, customers, players, everyone but them. Because they're just going to create another business. They're going to blame it on some random partner, random bold guy. And say, well, it was his fault. Even though it was all their faults. It was just this one guy's fault. Only this one guy knew. And uh, it's not that way in real life, guys.